Listen only mode. Hi everyone, this is Chad Hill and I have Adam Stetzer on the phone. Hey everybody, good afternoon. We're excited today to be on the topic of SEO proposals. This is a near, a near one that's near and dear to all of us as we are out uh, talking to lots of clients and um, trying to provide great proposals that ultimately win business. So I want to recap where we've been and kind of where you are at the point when you start a proposal. You've done a lot of work. You have uh, have a great website. You've gotten a lead to the website. They've read something about you or you've been out at networking at events and you have someone who's interested in services. At this point, you need to provide them the information they need to understand how SEO can help their business and then how your particular flavor and whether it's bundled with other things that, that, uh, that we do or whether it's just the link building that we do, um, how that can help them accomplish their business objectives. Now, typically from a sales standpoint, when it comes down to pricing, pricing is going to be in your proposal. And so you want to, our general recommendation is that you give them a couple different options. I always like to give one that, when we get to this in a minute, talks about how they can really be completely competitive with the biggest players in their market. So we're going to use the web grader to talk about what is that competitive landscape and what keywords are important in that competitive landscape. So give them one where they're basically going to capture as much of the market share or the search market share as possible. And then another one where it's a little bit more of a starter program where they can get in and get their feet wet 90 to 120 days and really see if they, and make sure that they're going to have some success within those 90 to 120 days so that at that point you can review the program and get them into a, a longer term uh, solution. Now we're going to walk through our standard sort of stock proposal that uh, many of you have seen and used and it's really all about providing some initial background about the company making sure that you really show that you understand the opportunity or their needs for search marketing and SEO. Talk about how some of the competitive analysis that's going to take those needs and say, now here's what you're up against, and then give them some ideas on keywords they might go after and ultimately the pricing to get them there. So it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to jump over at this point right into one of our template proposals and show you how I might go through and actually fill that proposal out. And Chad, today talking about how you get the lead and got up to this point is out of scope, right? We have other webinars, I, I believe, that address that. Because I could imagine some people are looking at it saying, yeah, but where'd you get that lead? That's a, a conversation for another day, right? Correct. And I, and I think I, I went back through and just looked at our the inventory of webinars. And there are a number that I would call fit into sort of our the business of SEO uh, webinars. And so there's, there are ones that cover the general sales process. There's ones that cover, you know, ways to go about getting leads. There's, there's also some that obviously once you have the lead and you need to retain that customer and actually you have that customer and you have them in a, in a program, things you can do to retain that customer, good account management procedures. So all of that is in the webinar section on our website. Click on resources, click on webinars, and there's a pretty, uh, pretty extensive list there of, of business-related topics. Cool. Okay, so let's jump over to our proposal here. And uh, if you don't have a copy of this, this is something you can contact your account manager and they'll send you a copy of the proposal. The one I'm looking at today is for a, a basic program, a local one, although the actual number of links and articles created and links built, that can be pretty easily updated in this proposal uh, and then matched to the, to the appropriate plan level. Okay, I always like to start with a basically a company overview. I think it's important to talk about your background, the, the people that work at the company, talk about what services you provide. So I'm using, in this case, we have one that we use here at HubShout where we talk about that we're a, an online marketing firm um, and that we specialize in SEO paid search, email marketing, and social media. So I, any one of you might have those four, you might have websites on there, there may be other things that you do. So I think it's important to kind of give a, a, a quick overview of who you are and what your credentials are. 
It definitely inc include corporate bios, especially for those of you who have experience in the industry that you're maybe selling into or in the area and you've been a member of the community, whatever it might be. I would include as much of that information here as possible. There's a lot of people that just want to know what is the background? Can this, is this someone I can trust? And for a lot of us, the places that we work, the associations that we're in, the um, community organizations that we're a part of all go into really building the some of the trust that the people that you're dealing with are, uh, the, the person that you're dealing with uh, is going to deliver and be there when you need them. Since we've rolled out the, the web grader, the next place that I recommend going is really jumping right into a competitive analysis. I think that what we've been able to, uh, the feedback that we've gotten and the information that when we're talking to people about you know, why SEO and, and how, what opportunity there is for them, oftentimes the quickest way to get right to the, right to the point is to type in their website, type in two of their competitors, see what the web grader shows, and that's often a great place to sort of zero in on what's the opportunity. Am I ahead or am I behind? So in this particular case, we're using our sort of trusted demo, the VetHubs demo. I plugged in to the web grader, VetHubs, Vet Network, and Vet Matrix. Those are three people that operate in that space. And I got back immediately some scores here. So I'm gonna flip over and just again, show you kind of what I did to, to get this. So this and while you're doing that, Chad, I'd love to hear from people listening to the webinar today to know if they've used the web grader in this fashion uh, as part of the sales and the closing process. Uh, you've got a little window where you can type a question in to me uh, on the side of your webinar screen. Any anecdotes or thoughts you have about that process would be really welcome. We could share them with the group here. Okay, so I've got now the, the data here coming back on the scores for VetHub's Vet Matrix and Vet Network. And again, being very practical here just about how I actually build this, I literally take a screenshot of this and I put it into the Word document. Um, I happen to have a tool um, here that just allows me to take a quick screenshot. And I can copy this. It's actually called Snagit but there's a hundred other ones out there that do a comp a basically the same thing. And then I can easily paste it into my document. So this is both a tutorial on, on cutting and pasting as well as an SEO proposal writing, but some of this stuff is what I think makes the proposal look nice. So I'm just including a graphic here and I have uh, the three scores. So the next part here is this text that you can grab right from this proposal, but it talks about, how we calculate this score and what this score means. And so in this case, what this is saying is that Vet Network's traffic is worth roughly $2,800 a month. Vet Hubs is worth $1,105 a month. And Vet Matrix is $259. So this clearly, in, in this particular case, I would be looking at this if I were the owner of Vet Hubs and say, well, what is Vet Network doing that I'm not? Now, in this particular case, Vet Network actually ranks on some keywords that maybe aren't as important to the business um, uh, here, but, but generally speaking, you can see how this works. So veterinary websites, there are 320 searches a month. The average cost per click is 217. Vet Hubs is ranked number three, and Vet Network is ranked number two. So the way we're doing this math, if you flip back to the proposal, is we're taking the estimated traffic divided by rank, and then we're multiplying that by the estimated cost per click. So in this case, the reason that Vet Network is getting a higher score from the, ter from the veterinary website's keyword is because they're ranked in position two and Vet Hubs is in position three. So when we divide 320 by three and versus 320 by two, and then multiply by 217, just on that one keyword, they're getting a higher traffic score. And you can kind of see that that repeats. Now they have some, some keywords that maybe that hubs that doesn't focus as much on logo design wouldn't be as concerned about. So maybe hospital logos isn't as important to vet hubs, but you can continue to go down the list and get a sense of, of which keywords they're ranking on and which ones they're not. 
uh, any of any keyword that has a red X is a keyword where a competitor ranks better than the prospect. So I can kind of scan down the list and see which of these keywords might be something that they would want to focus on. Definitely veterinary websites, maybe not hospital logos or Carl's Bad Animal Hospital, um, but certainly maybe, again, you know, you have veterinary logos, so that's not one that they would want. Um, but you kind of go down this list and see which ones uh, they would want. So veterinary website design is. So there's, you know, Vet Hubs is in position seven. Vet Network is in position one. So they're getting, obviously, more of a higher score off of that keyword. So what I did is I included just, you know, down the list here, the top 20 or so terms, again, taking a screenshot, and this included the list here of where prospect ranked on that keyword and then where their competitors ranked. And then what I recommend is sort of talking about adding some commentary around. You can see that that network ranks better than you on logos and you do do offer logos so you should actually um, go after the logo keywords because they're um, outranking on those keywords. So you know that's the kind of commentary that you would want. And what I think that does is it starts to build some credibility that hey you've actually gone into you're showing them something that most likely they don't really know. They don't really know how they rank against their competitors and where their competitors, which keywords they're targeting versus versus the ones that they already have rankings on. Okay, so that gets us down to the opportunity. Ready to take on the first is um, yep. first is about the this web grader that you're showing here. The web grader is great. It would be a super selling tool if it could be part of our website and was white labeled. Yeah, that's a great question. It's something we've we've uh, heard. We're, we've uh, have it on. We've been kind of playing with how we might approach that. Uh, what I'm showing you today was is something that I think you can certainly cut and paste. And I was sensitive to the idea that you probably wouldn't want to have obviously have HubShout in your proposal. So this is something that you could pretty easily cut and paste out and there's really not any sort of risk of, of, of branding exposure here. And then in terms of us offering that tool, that is something that we are still talking about. We're still in, I would call, sort of extended beta on the web grader. We're still working through how we can better present the content, do some, do some things with it. But so until we get it to a point where we feel like it's ready for prime time. We're going to keep it sort of on HubShot only. And Adam, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Well, there's another question right behind it, just in case we uh, wanted to answer it twice. I've used this method that Chad is showing in our last proposal. The client wanted to see the results and how I found them. Is the web grader going to be opened so that we can show people on our own portal? So essentially the same question there. And I think that that is our intention. We haven't put a date on it. Uh, I am still seeing a few errors come through in the beta launch of this, so I'm a, I'm a little worried about pushing it out when it's not uh, completely perfect. But if there's enough pressure and you think it could help you sell, we, we could probably be persuaded to move that a little quicker. Yeah. Okay, so moving on to the next section, once you establish the competitive rankings against the competitor against the competitor either one or more i think the next thing at this point is to really go back into and talk about the opportunity and this is where i'd like to get into what is the real objective and i think it's it's very important that when the client is reading this proposal you're speaking to them in their language so you know we all jump to clicks and rankings and traffic and conversions but I think for most people, especially those who are not as up to speed on how SEO fits into their business or, for that matter, any other online marketing, it's important to step back and put it in their perspective. And they've ideal, they probably have brought you in for one of a few different reasons. And I'm, I'm going to be talking SEO here from that perspective. So one of the reasons is going to be that their boss said they don't rank as well as the competitor. So the competitive analysis we just did is going to sort of prove that point and they're going to say, yes, that's the problem. I need to fix that because either I personally don't like it or my boss, they don't like it and I need to get that resolved. Another one could be I'm spending a fortune on paid search 
and I just need to understand is there a way that I can, it's working for us, but I need to figure out if there's a way that we can either get more leads and so maybe SEO can help us or that we can maybe save some money. Uh, so there's you know some factors there that you can you can talk about. I think it's very important that you write those down and you try to get as precise as possible in terms of you mentioned that each new sale is worth five hundred dollars to you, so you have up to a hundred dollars to spend on marketing costs. So you know really getting into what these what the very precise and sort of the math behind what their goal is. I think that the the connection you want to make is how SEO can help them accomplish that goal. So for example, if pay-per-click is very successful, it's working for us, but we're not sure if in the long run how we can scale this program or how we can get more leads because it seems like we've tapped out paid search. That's a perfect place to, again, connect and say, well, and I don't have it in this proposal, but we've in prior presentations talked about you know, the click-through rate on a paid search ad versus the click-through rate on an organic listing. And it can be as high as, you know, maybe a paid search ad has a 1% to 3% click-through rate if you're lucky. And whereas the top few slots, the top slot has an extremely high click-through rate, but, the, you know, maybe, maybe even a 40% click-through rate on, on, on the organic side, but that the other slots underneath it also have a very high click-through rate that could exceed the click-through rate of paid search. So there's, there's a way there that you can connect. Accomplishing the rankings on these keywords is going to help, you know, not only increase the cost, but the value of it could be this if we took the estimated cost per click and, the, and, and a higher click-through rate, we could actually save this kind of money or the value of the traffic would be this, that number. Um, or in some cases, if you're dealing with a smaller customer who maybe deals with more phone calls that are business, you want to connect that rankings can lead to traffic, which ultimately the industry standard conversion rate might be 5 to 10% on a website. So for every 10 visitors that you get to your website, we can get one new phone call to your business. And then if you know that for every two phone calls to your business you get, you get one new customer worth this amount. Those are the types of, of uh, that's how you can connect the value of bringing those, those rankings coming through to visits ultimately to phone calls and new clients. So this is where I definitely would recommend talking about that. To finish off this section, the other part that I would include is to go back to the list of keywords that you identified in the competitive analysis section and pick the ones that you think are most appropriate for them to work on. Now I always am really clear and I said you know that central essentially in here that these are potential keywords because I always like to leave it open uh, if they were to come back and say well you've got it all wrong these are the wrong keywords I always like to make sure it's really clear that these are some draft potential keywords final keyword selection will be done as part of our, our kickoff process. So in this case, I went back and I looked at the keyword list and I said, here are the five, let's see, I picked uh, you know the seven or eight keywords that I think would be most relevant. The next thing I did is actually I went into Google, and this is where you get into a little bit of key, the keyword research side of, of things. I took those keywords, veterinary websites, and I put them in quotes. So let's just take this and walk over. So I search for veterinary websites in quotes and find that there are 43,000 results where that exact phrase is on a page in Google. So I take that and I plug that in as competition. And then what I would do is I would walk through those and sort of do a, an analysis knowing their budget or roughly what they might be willing to pay and actually sort of connect whether or not that should be a target. Like for example, Veterinary marketing just seemed to be a little out of sync. It has 245 searches, 144,000 pages in the Google index that have that exact phrase on it. That one might be a little tough depending on where the client currently ranked on it. So if they were maybe at the maybe on page two, maybe it's worth including that. Um, but if they were, you know, not ranked at all, 
that one looks like it would be maybe not my first choice because it's a fairly competitive keyword and you know relative to some of these other keywords probably not worth the focus and I should probably you know, talk about that really fast so I'm gonna bring up our pricing sheet here just really fast and uh, talk about the appropriate for results section here so um, you can see that we basically have our local one local two regional one plans all have an appropriate for the number of results so you can see that for example the 44,000 uh, term would actually be a local two so if this client was looking for just to pay no more than $199 I might exclude that phrase so I always then measure kind of which keywords they want against the plan that it might be appropriate for when making a decision about which keywords to target. Okay, so moving on down the page. The next section is our process overview. And actually, before I start that, Adam, are there any questions about the opportunity section here? Uh, no. no, nothing new since the web grader discussion, really. Great. Okay, so the process overview is, is for the most part boilerplate. This is just explaining our general approach to SEO, what link building is, how we write articles, informational articles, and we post those articles on various sites with links back to the client's website, uh, what some of the um, RSS syndication is, and then essentially how that all fits together. So I go through the process overview, and, and, and that's the next section. And I can, again, recommend that you just take this, copy and paste it into your proposal. If you're doing something unique, I know some of, our, some of you are adding in other services. You might be building their website. You might be writing more on-site content for them. So make sure that you just you know, take this part of it, merge it in with whatever other things you're doing that are part of your formula, and, uh, and put that out there. Now this is a part that I think is really important and this is to me one of the things that we've heard pretty consistently wins customers business when they're using us and that's going back and reminding them about the software and how their dashboard becomes an important part of measuring the program success. So when you can sort of visualize that assuming that you weren't the only person who talked to this prospect that they might be looking at two or three other proposals. And one of the things that I think they'll probably see a lot of the same stuff in all three of those proposals, right? That it's important to have links to your website, there's some on-site components you need to worry about, uh, fresh content on the website, that links are really important, and, and you know, a number of other things that, that are part of that proposal. But the place where I think we can you can break the tie is when you hopefully in when you had your first discussion with them you were able to get a demo in and show them the software and how it not only tracks and measures the results of the campaign but is a great way for them to see what activities are going on and where they are in the process so I include this section and what I've done is picked four uh, four or five screenshots that I think best explain and remind people of the demo that you went through so in this case I have the SEO overview screen, which has you know, traffic from organic, branded, and non-branded keywords, some information about links coming in from various sources. Also show them the submission screen, talk about this is where you can go and see actually where the content is going, click through and look at links. I think this is an important one is to say, you know, in addition to the SEO and the rankings and where the content's being created and the links coming back, one of the things that your dashboard can do is track all of your sales. So for the first time, you're really going to be able to see not only the activities and the rankings, but what is that turning into in terms of, of customers. And not only customers filling out web lead forms and showing as conversions in Google Analytics or whatever other conversion tracking tool you're using, but also phone calls. So all the phone call data 
would be added into the bar graph here and would show over time how many new customers you're getting that are completing web lead forms as well as phone calls into the business. I think this is also a good chance to talk about email marketing. So all of them would be getting a built-in email marketing service that again is completely connected to all the other parts of their online marketing campaign. So whether that email marketing tool is being used to nurture leads that come in from the previous screen or whether it's being used to prospect and find new leads by building lists that ultimately are bringing in new customers, this is something that from a client standpoint, and even from you as a web agency, you can talk about all this activity is being measured and monitored right here so that when you get on an account review call with them, you can actually go through tab by tab and talk about how the SEO, the pay-per-click, the email marketing is all leading to traffic and visitors and then show them on the sales tab how many of those are turning into phone calls and web leads. So that's all right there in one place and I think that's something that most of the clients out there who are busy and already are logging into enough different websites are going to appreciate the fact that they can log in in one place and get all that information. And then the final part in the proposal would be to, of course, round that out with all the social media mentions. So in addition to the traffic that's going on coming from the search engines, you're also able to measure and look at what type of things are being said and where are they being said about the business whether that be on Twitter or uh, various blogs, and then keep track of that all here inside the social media monitoring tab inside HubShop. The next section that we include in proposals would be then just to kind of walk through a little bit more details around the actual program and what's recommended for them. So I've included here just a, a, a review of the final keyword research and what we're doing. So what we included in the proposal, I would consider is sort of keyword research light. We went and we looked at their competitors. It's, it's very effective from a sales standpoint because you're able to you know, get those competitive juices flowing for, uh, for your prospective client. No one wants to be outranked or you know, outscored by uh, a competitor. But when it comes down to it, you also are going to want to include other things like looking at their Google Analytics data, if they have some, to, to identify potential keywords, and also do some analysis inside keyword research tools, whether that be AdWords or some of the other uh, services out there that, that allow you to explore and find potential keywords. We talk about on-site recommendations. So I think all of you know our, our general um, approach on that is that you know, on-site optimization is necessary but not sufficient. So we always include an on-site recommendations report. In some cases, we can help imp implement that. In other cases, that's done by either the client or by our partner, you. And so essentially, you know, we do provide that. That's something that goes out as soon as the, the project starts. And that information is, is uh, definitely part of the proposal here. And then we get into link building program and what we do. So we talk about article distribution and link building, uh, and then pretty much from there get into the details and costs. So we include a description of each of the components of our SEO programs. And if you were providing sort of the, either the, you know, basic and advanced or high, medium, or me low, medium, high type of program where uh, this would be, I would typically recommend just adding some columns to this section and then maybe a description either above it or below it saying, that if you're if you want to uh, you know, be very aggressive and rank on all the keywords that your competitors rank on or all the keywords we've identified I would recommend this plan going after this number of keywords and here's sort of the plan feature uh, columns that, that go along with it if you want to test the program or do something a little bit more that shows some results within in a, in a quicker time period you know, here's another program that you can go after. Maybe the keywords you're recommending there are a little less competitive. And then at the bottom here, the price. So I think that this goes out uh, as the proposal. And then ultimately, 
the most difficult part of the sales process happens, which is once a proposal is out, it's now time to follow up and uh, work through the negotiate review phase, as we call it here, uh, where essentially it's time where there's important follow-ups. This is ideally where you have autoresponders, uh, where it's sort of post-proposal autoresponder, which is maybe answering a few other questions that someone might be get might have as they evaluate proposals, and that should certainly be followed up with your own phone calls and even in-person meetings to make sure you review this with someone uh, in person. Chad, a few questions for you here. Um, the first is, I noticed there's no inclusion of any sort of guarantees in your proposal. Uh, why not? Yeah, I mean, I think we, we have a pretty uh, firm belief that that's something uh, that from the very beginning, Google and all their guidelines on about picking SEOs said you can't guarantee rankings. And we know it to be true. You really can't guarantee rankings. So what we, we typically do is we always are showing comparable accounts uh, and, and talk and of course there's references and testimonials but it's something that uh, we just we don't include a guarantee and Adam I know you might want to talk about that as well yeah I mean I've read a lot of the guarantees that are out there from uh, other places and when you get into the fine print they get they get awfully uh, wishy-washy and sometimes a little even scammy so I think that's the other thing we always advise people is if you're going to be persuaded by a guarantee, uh, read every letter of that little contract because you might find out they're saying, well, we're really going to guarantee you know, X percentage of your keywords, and then they'll say we have control over what keywords we pick. So we all know that game. It, it doesn't really relate to value. And so uh, as Chad said, we just like to take the high road and be clean with Google, uh, follow their guidelines, and say we're going to really work at getting you real business on real keywords and not sugarcoat it uh, with something that really doesn't mean that much. And here's another one for you, Chad. I noticed your proposal here was for a small SEO plan. Is it better to start with a low price plan and do foot in the door and then upsell, or should we be trying to get a bigger deal that's more well-rounded with other components such as PPC or social? I think that our general approach on that is that it's always better to have more in more that you're doing for a client because there inevitably will be times where one program is doing better than another and just the honest side of running an agency business is that the more information you have and the more things you're doing that you can go into your client with the more you can uh, you know uh, counter counterbalance things parts of the program that are going great and parts of the program that are maybe not doing as well as you'd like them to be to go to be going so I think it's always better to have more things in there in terms of this price point, this honestly was just, I was just putting in the, you know, our basic plan. You could easily, like I said, have fit in the other programs, and I would likely give someone two choices. The one issue with foot in the door is that if you don't think the person's really committed to it, to it to, on, on the get-go, the problem is often that it's going to be very difficult to ask for more 90 days in or 120 days in. So let's just say that you picked pretty competitive keywords and you under you put them on a low plan. So you know, knowing that they probably weren't going to get as far as you would like or they would even like after the initial 90 to 120 days. But they they'll probably have some improvement. They'll definitely have improvement. I've seen some people that are very good at having no problem going into that person and saying you need to put more in, you need to double it and triple it, and and they're they're good at being persuasive that. You know when, when the sort of the um, when when things get tough, you know, you gotta you gotta do more. Um, other people aren't as good at sort of selling that. So I think it really you have to kind of look at how what your sales style is and what your customer is going to react to. Uh, so I, I sort of two answers there. Um, one is definitely the broader your program. I think the better you have, the longer you're going to be with that client. So that's always good. Retention's good. And then second thing is um, you have to sort of decide whether or not the client you're talking to and your own sales style is going to be is going to work for the foot in the door approach. I think those are good, Chad. And I probably could add two more uh, compelling reasons that you want to go a little bigger rather than smaller. One is the software that we're looking at here that's part of the package really shines 
with the more services you have in there because it's, it's really good at integrating data from the, all these different sources and showing these combined marketing dashboards. So the more you more products you, you're supporting for your client, the better the software is going to look because it's going to be that much more robust because the data will be in there. And secondly, I want to point out that if you're just doing a point service, that means that someone else is offering those other services. Let's say you're only providing SEO, but you don't provide PPC for a client and you don't do social media management for them. In all likelihood, some other vendor is doing pay-per-click and social media management for them. And that other vendor is likely to be looking at your SEO business saying, I want it, because they are just like you wanting to upsell revenues. So since they have a relationship and they're in the door with these other services, they're going to be cross-selling, which can put you at risk. And so we found that the more you can beat them to the punch using the, the software uh, as your way to do it, and then be the go-to person for all their online marketing needs, you, you have a stronger defense from those competitors. So I, I would add those two reasons to what you said, Chad. Okay. Okay, well... Adam, are there any other questions? Yeah, uh, since you're done with the material, I've got one last question here for you, and that is, can you talk about what successful resellers are doing to capture leads and convert to clients? Yeah, that's a great question, and that is, uh, like I think we said at the beginning, a topic of another webinar that we've done. So uh, definitely you should check out the sort of full version of the answer, but I can give you the, the quick version. And it really depends on what the target market is for a reseller. We, we tend to have, I'd say, two different kinds of resellers. We have some resellers that are very focused on a geographic market, and then we have others that are focused a little bit more in a, in a vertical. And uh, we've had the question, which one's better? And so I'll, I'll cut that one off at the uh, uh, right, right now and tell you that both we've seen both be very successful. We have some very successful resellers that are in a, in a vertical market, and we have others that are very successful uh, working in a geographic market. I, what I find is that the way they tend to kind of get their leads is a little different. So, and I think this is, this is accurate. I'd say the local market guys, the guys that are targeting a specific market, tend to be a little bit more outward focused. They're they're following the rules of find new leads every month go to meetings, whether it's a chamber meeting or network meetings to try to generate those new leads or new pr prospects. They're putting those prospects into email autoresponders along with their own follow-up campaigns so that those people that they're finding are getting informative content and also appropriate phone calls back from them. So it you know, really is part of that process. And then those activities tend to be leading to people saying, give me a proposal for this particular service. And, and I think that's, I would say, pretty consistently what we're seeing um, on the local market side. The vertical market guys, it's a lot of the same stuff. The only difference is that the way they source those leads tends to be a little bit different. They're not out, feet on the street, attending networking sessions. They're more likely to be at industry conferences trying to find places in their industry where they can, other guest blogs and places where they can actually get information out about what they do and what they know. And then a lot of it also is publishing content, again, through guest blogging or on their website that people in their industry might be looking for. So that tends to be what we see uh, leading to, to the lead flow that ultimately turns into customers. Yeah, Jed, that's well put. And I think I would just add, don't fall prey to the shiny new thing thinking, the magic bullet thinking, which is, oh, if I could only discover that little marketing secret that I don't know, that would make the leads come faster because that's really just in our experience not, not, the, fact, not the case. The reality is you, you know what you need to do. You just need to be doing it consistently, repetitively, maybe more. And, Chad, you did a great uh, webinar, I don't know, six months ago where you had a I forget what it was called, but it was sort of a four, three, two, one prescription of, you know, here's what you do every week. If you do this for three months and you give it you give it a college try, you will find that your lead list is growing and your prospects are growing and your closure rates are growing. And it was something along the lines of, 
you know, get to a couple events, make four phone calls, have two lunches. I forget which one went to which, but it was a nice <laughs> little uh, compact way to do this. Do you remember? I, no, I was going to try. I was going to try to remember the exact numbers, but I couldn't. But it, yeah, the 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 basic flow is that go to one or two networking events. I mean, honestly, one one networking event a week, whether that be a lunch or a meeting of other people. Get five or ten new cards, make four phone calls, and you know have another one on one or two one on one lunches a week. But I, I will uh, find that uh, webinar and we'll get the account manager to send that out to everybody. Yeah, we put it up on the blog again. It was just it wasn't overly complicated. And again, these are things you you already know. But sometimes when it, it's put into a catchy uh, little way to remember it and a structure that you can use repetitively, it helps you it helps you get out there and, and really make things happen. And um, just the last question that popped in, Chad, while we were talking was, uh, I like the look of the new proposals with the updated graphics to match the dashboard. Do we talk with our account contact to get this updated proposal? Yes, that's correct. I will send, this will be uh, with all the account managers uh, right after this call. So just feel free to shoot your account manager an email and they'll get you this proposal out so that you can have it for, for your use. I also like how it looks, Chad. This is sharp. It looks, these graphics are great. The software plays really well. It's, it's uh, well integrated with the other content and services. I think it looks good. Perfect. Okay, everyone, well, thank you very much for your time today. And this, as normal, will be posted on the webinar section of our website by tomorrow. Have a great day. Thanks for coming, everybody. It was uh, good talking with you.